Okay, thank you, Faisal, and thanks all of you who have already joined to this seminar webinar. Today, our uh, topic is basically routing and switching course for uh, day one. Uh, the presenter today, Urpita Haladar, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Communication Engineering, Port Akhle Science and Technology University. Uh, the to topic basically, uh, she will uh, discuss about the switching part, next day routing part. So now I would like to request uh, Urpita Haladar to uh, conduct the seminar session. Urpita. Thank you, sir. And uh, uh, sir, can we, you please uh, give me will, the time? Uh, okay. So I think we will continue the lecture five twenty. Then we'll send you the uh, link, uh, assessment link. Then you can start the uh, assess assessment. Uh, so you can continue up to 520. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, Faisal, after that, you can, uh, you will uh, email you the uh, assessment link. And if you have any question, attendees, if you have any uh, question, you can uh, write down the question answer box or chat box. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, dear participant, welcome to today's session. Uh, I am Orpita Haoladar, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Communication Engineering. Today's session is about routing and switching for four day one. So, so in a simple word, switching is a process to forward packets from one port to another port toward the destination. If I said uh, there is a source and destination, then what actually switch do? When data comes on a port in a switch, uh, uh, then it is called ingress. Please clearly remember. And when data leave a port or goes out uh, through a port, then it is egress. A communication system may include a number of switches and nodes, router, PCs, laptops, etc. Uh, as we see in previous courses, and uh, we know also. Madam, sorry for interrupting you. I think your microphone is uh, too closer uh, to your mouth. Uh, please, you can uh, desert it uh, a little bit. Okay, okay. So, uh, switching in IT and computer networking is that uh, transfer of data packets or blocks of data uh, through the network switch. Uh, that actually transfer data from uh, source code of your device or uh, like a computer or the destination port, it also can be a computer or router, etc. Right? So nowadays, we can say that user or customer expect uh, instant access. We all need instant access. Uh, like uh, if you feel uh, your network is not up to the mark, then if you, you feel disturbed, right? Uh, and uh, also there are some people that uh, they want access from anywhere. Uh, it doesn't matter that where he is working or where he is living. So uh, we can say that uh, user or customer expect instant access to company resources from anywhere at any time. These resources uh, may be traditional data or video or can be uh, voice type data right so you can realize the increasing need of collaborating these technologies these technologies allow real-time sharing of resources between multiple remote individuals as though uh, they were the same physical location or from this different physical location and different devices must work you can say um, effortlessly work together to uh, to provide a fast, secure, and reliable connection between the hosts, right? Okay, so our uh, today's course is about routing and switching, but this part is about switching. So what actually switch do? How actually it works? What is the forwarding mechanism? What is the purpose, etc. So we will go through this lecture. So, uh, first of all, uh, I think you should know about the course content. So at the first day, we will cover this introduction about 
uh, what we can learn or we can know about this course. Then about the basics of switching, then NAT and PAT, that is uh, network address translation and port address translation. Then spanning tree, it's the important protocol for switch. And then conclusion with uh, your uh, questions and answer, Okay, then we can go through the uh, introduction with the what we will cover in this courses. The primary functions and feature of the switch. What are the primary? Uh, uh, is there any problem? You can continue. Okay. So uh, next we will explain how actually data voice and video uh, converts in a switch network. Then describe a uh, switch network in a small to medium sized business. Then explain how frame are forwarded in a switch network. Then compare collision to a broadcast domain. Uh, some configuration uh, switch port to meet uh, network requirement, the purpose and function of NAT and need of spanning. Why we actually need the spanning, etc. Okay, so we first uh, go with uh, our switch. There's what is actually switch. Uh, actually, LAN switch provide the connection point for end user into the enterprise network uh, and are uh, primarily responsible for the control of information within the LAN environment. Router facilitates the movement of information between LANs and, uh, and uh, routers are generally unaware of individualities, uh, individual posts. Okay, all the advanced service depends on the availability of the, <coughs> sorry, routing and switching infrastructure. Uh, actually on switch they are built, like uh, we also already see the basic campus uh, network design or network design requirement, then how actually they build, right? This infrastructure actually must be uh, carefully designed, deploy and manage, uh, manage to provide a stable platform. Okay, so a switch uh, you can see here, uh, switch actually a hardware component uh, in network infrastructure that performs the switching process. The switching process actually contains um, network devices, computer servers, uh, and so on, or many other. A switch enables multiple devices to share network while uh, preventing is uh, device traffic from interface uh, interfering with another or other device traffic. Also, you can say that um, the switch act as a traffic pulley or traffic cop uh, at a busy inter uh, interface. When a data packet arrives at a port of a, of a switch port, the switch determines which direction the packet is headed. Uh, it then forward the packet through the correct port or uh, correct destination for the destination, the who, who are the receiver. Okay, then some data packets might uh, come to the switch from devices like computer, uh, or you can say voice over IP, that's mean view IP phones, uh, which are uh, attached directly to it, or other data packets might come to the switch from uh, indirectly uh, connected devices through a, uh, network elements such as hub or router. Okay, so the switch know which of the network's device are connected to it, and it can transmit or uh, transfer the data packet between the devices directly. In case data packets uh, may be gone to more distance uh, of uh, destination or uh, receiver uh, of the network, the switch actually uh, forward the packets to the uh, another switch or through the router if uh, it's uh, in different network 
uh, you will also uh, learn about uh, static routing dynamic routing then uh, that's mean if any network doesn't know about another ne network but it wants to send packet or data then how it will do so uh, in next routing session you will also see it uh, now we can see some uh, example here so see here this is a switch this is a router and there is some pieces or devices that is uh, communicate uh, that is connected to a switch and next a image we can, you can say this is hub this is router this is pc this is and this is PC. then what actually the difference between this switch and hubs okay to better understand understand the concept of framing frame switching based on the hardware address of a device you need to understand the how switches uh, differ from hubs right how actually we can see from an example you can see here a hub is connected uh, with three pc and also through a router okay um the uh, a lan in which all the hosted uh, connects to a uh, hub as mentioned previously ha have create only one single collision joint so the chance for a collision to occur is high the hub uh, shows here simply repeat the signal see you can see here uh, if this pc is sending any package or any signal then hub only uh, repeat the signals to receive uh, to its receiver out all the port there is so many ports and so many connection and it will uh, pass it to all of these ports expect the one from which the signal is coming or receiving so no frame filtering take place here please clearly remember no frame filtering take place okay this can cause a problem with traffic congestion or data security um we can give her an example uh hope you imagine uh if you had 20 hosts connected to a hub a packet uh, would be sent to 90 host okay uh instant just one this can also causes of security problem um uh, as a switch you can see here uh switch have also the uh, characteristics or feature that if uh, it take a uh, packet from one port it actually broadcast the uh, packet to all the port but switch have some mechanism that we can prevent this or we can use this to separately use the packets like to the destination only or to the uh, vlan group uh, like 10 like 20 as we see about the vlan uh, in basic campus network right so con um, uh, consider the way that switch how actually work we have the same topology as uh, hub only this time we can use this uh switch instead of hub where this pc want to send packet to this pc so see this uh, packet is uh transferring to the receiver through this switch but if it is a hub then it actually broadcast all through all the port to all the devices okay so uh we already said that uh, what actually switch do or actually router do. so we can uh, compare here the switching and routing the basic thinking with or basic basic functionalities so router and switching and the basic function of network communication but their function are different how it's the main concept uh, basically The function of switch is to uh, switch data packets between devices on the same network, okay? Uh, but the function of routing is to route the packets between different networks. That means same networks with same LAN and different network, you can say different LANs, uh, that's, that's mean local area networks. 
switch actually operates at layer two. It also uh, worked uh, operate at layer three, but it's multi multi layer. Uh, I will come to it. Uh, but uh, at the beginning, we can say that switch operates at layer two of the WSI model. That's mean data link layer. Okay, a switch know what to say in the data packet by using this layer two addresses. That is, you know all about the MAC addresses. Okay. Uh, so uh, hardware address it can be called uh, hardware is uh, address of the network a switch maintain a table of mac address i will also cover it uh, and uh, what physical switch port uh, they are connected to actually they also take the information or record the switching function can be explained more simply but that um, switching is the function of moving data data package um, <clears throat> sorry data package uh, or you can say uh, frames or ethernet frames uh, within the same lab where the router uh, operates that layer 3 of OSI model um a router knows where to send data packets by using network part of destination ip address so what actually the main uh, pro, uh main uh, concern or note here that switch actually uh, maintain a table of uh, mac address and router will also uh, create a table or maintain a table that will uh, consider ip addresses the router maintain the table called routing table use the routing table to determine the uh, router to the destination network okay uh, so switch devices within a lan uh, by using mac address to identify where to data uh, packet must send and a router connect the vlan to other network to the or to the internet and a router use ip addresses to uh, route the data packet so we can summarize this okay but there is no routing algorithm allowed by type of switch when uh, that's mean layer two type of switch but uh, i also said you about layer three where the layer three switches follow the routing algorithm the data packets are uh, destined to the next uh, defined hope or uh, destination host to uh, route it on the defined IP address in receiver end. So uh, you can say here uh, if there is a layer to switch, then is my domain a pure layer to switch? Yes, it can be. Okay, then see it is multi layer switch. Okay, do I need to aggregate multiple access? Uh, switches yes do i need inter vlan right for vlan we can use layer to switch but for inter vlan we actually need this multi layer switch and this is router so do i need to go to the isp one or internet then you must use the router okay you can see here the wsi model and tcp ip model see here that WSI model and this is the TCP IP model. Already you have uh, some knowledge about WSI model and TCP IP model because it actually described in fast course, uh, network tools and device course. And also I have, a little, I, have, I have discussed it in basic campus network. So see here, this is a source host and this is a destination host. And you can see here, this is physical layer, data link layer, and switch is working there. It is operating in data link layer. Then again, if you see here, this is network layer. That means layer three, and router is operating in this layer. So here is also an example you can see. Uh, see router full uh, layer three feature complete one technology router uh, sorry layer three switch feature combining some of uh, layer two switches and some of routers and layer two switch only deal with mac addresses and care no ip addresses 
clearly remember this. And there is an also a uh, figure you can see there is the internet connection, one interface with where we use a router. Then is layer three switch that is multi layer switch. You can see here this is VLAN, uh, VLAN five, VLAN six, and this is layer two, layer two, layer two. Uh, these three are layer two switches, and from this uh, we can see here uh, VLAN two, VLAN two, VLAN three, VLAN four. That's mean different VLAN here is connect uh, created to. Okay. Now layer to switch actually how layer to switch work i uh, hope an interesting question arise in your mind i don't know if, uh, actually uh, arise or not but i think you should that means uh, if the switch at the layer two do not follow any routing table or routing algorithm then how they will learn about the mac address of the next door uh, do you anyone have this question whatever uh, i will explain it the answer uh, i can say that uh, it will do by following the address resolution protocol do you know about address resolution protocol arp hope you know uh, the working uh, principle or working for protocol if i uh, want to explain then you have to see this figure see in this figure <clears throat> you can say here see here a network where a switch is connected with four hosts right this is a switch and there is a four host it's one two three and four now pc1 pc1 uh, wants to send a packet or data packet to pc2 form this position to this position okay although pc1 knows the ip address of pc2 as they are communicate at the first time it's okay but it does not know the mac address of the reception receipt uh, host like uh, pc2 that means pc1 know the ip address of pc2 but do not know the mac address of pc2 then what actually it do at this time pc1 use an arp that means address resolution protocol uh, to discover the mac address of the pc2 okay so what will it do the switch send the arp request to all the port excluding this port that means the pc1 uh, which uh, port it is actually connected then pc2 when receive the arp see here this is an ARP, this is ARP request, this is ARP request. But when PC2 actually receive the request, it, it will uh, know that uh, the request is for it uh, itself, right? Then uh, PC2 actually <clears throat> reply the ARP response message with its MAC address. Then PC1 can get it. So PC2, uh, uh, when receive the ARP, it will send its uh, its mac address and also store or gather the mac address of pc1 i hope you can understand okay therefore uh, by the uh, um, by the flow of this message the switch learn which mac address are uh, assigned to which port see here pc1 actually uh, requested ARP to PC2, but it actually uh, broadcasted to all ports. So when PC2 actually gives its um, MAC address through the reply of ARP, it also collects the MAC address of PC1. So through this ARP, all the uh, PCs or all the port can be uh, verified by the mac addresses that which port is uh, containing which mac addresses okay uh, so uh, we can say that pc2 sent its mac address in the arp uh, response message and switch now gather the mac address of pc2 and uh, back to the mac address table that means it will store uh, the MAC address of PC1 address table and uh, also PC2 will uh, store the MAC address of PC1. 
So uh, here we can clearly understand if uh, layer two switch actually do not use any routing table or routing protocol or algorithm, then how actually it collect the MAC addresses. So like this, which will keep the maintain the hardware addresses of each of the connected host. Okay, now there is some features and application of layer to switch. So what are the features? Layer to switch uh, actually act as a network bridge. So what is network bridge? I know, I think you all know. Actually that links up various end devices like a computer networking system on one single platform. They are actually able to transport um, data very rapidly and uh, competently from the source to the destination and in the LAN network. Then uh, you can see here, uh, uh, Layer two switches actually perform the uh, switching function to rearrange the data frame from the source to destination. And by learning the MAC address, as I said before, uh, MAC address of the destination node form uh, address table of the switch. Layer two switch actually split the uh, complete LAN network into small VLAN network. Okay. So by configuring the multiple VLAN within a uh, vast LAN uh, network, the switch becomes faster and it is not being physically connected. Okay. Now we can see here some uh, the application of layer to switch. So uh, though layer to switch, we can uh, send the data frame from the source to destination that is uh, uh, switched uh, in the same VLAN easily without being uh, um, cable connected or physically connected or being at the same location. The, the server of the uh, software company can be put um, uh, certainly at uh, one location and the client uh, Disparated or uh, at the other location, you can say can access the data easily without latency, but it must have the authorization and thereby save the server cost and time. Okay, so you can also see here that organization can make uh, internal communication by configuring the host on the same VLAN by using this type of switches without the need of any internet connection. And here is the software. Uh, uh, that's mean if you say that software testers also use uh, this switch for sharing their tools by keeping it uh, centrally at one server location and the other server uh, can access them by um, being uh, so far apart or uh, not physically connected by configuring all the same VLAN network system. Okay, so here is all about uh, layer two switch actually. Uh, uh, how actually layer to switch collect the MAC address and what is the feature and the application of the uh, layer to switches. The next uh, we will discuss about layer three switches. Actually, layer three switch is used for inter VLAN and also so many purpose for so many purpose, and uh, um, we can also uh, see uh, that uh, some. Mm -hmm, net pet or static uh, um, static net or dynamic net then we'll see uh, some more information the layer to switch it fails uh, uh, or if it's not working then uh, we need to transfer the data between uh, um, LAN or vlan through uh, layer 3 switch so uh, the layer is layer three switch actually come in this uh, situation or you can say uh, for this uh, purpose as the te uh, technique they use for routing the data packet to the destination uh, is using ip address and subnetting i hope you all actually uh, attend the previous class uh, that actually conducted by uh, Professor Dr. Samsud Jaman sir, uh, IP4 and IP6 version of uh, IP address. Uh, actually, he also uh, beautifully explained the, what is subnet, how subnetting is working, uh, and etc. Host, host address, destination address, and so on. So, uh, left switch work at the uh, 
third layer of the website reference model or uh, perform the routing of the data packets uh, using IP addresses. They have actually the faster switching speed than the layer two switch. And uh, they are even uh, faster than uh, conventional routing as they perform the routing of the data, pa uh, data packets or uh, without uh, using additional uh, hopes or next to uh, what I actually say. That's why they are leading to better performance. So due to the functionalities of this um, um, routing technique and the layer three switch, they are implemented for uh, network building in inter or and intra network. So what actually I said that uh, the layer three actually implemented for network building for intra and inter network. Okay, in, uh, in order to actually understand the function of uh, layer three, we need to understand the concept of routing first. So you should join the routing uh, of the next day, the routing session of the next day. So layer three device at the source and uh, firstly look at the routing table, which has all the information regarding the source and destination IP address and subnet mask. Hope you all also familiar with the subnet mask in previous courses. Actually, all the courses are connected to each other. Okay, so you have to attend all the courses uh, and it will uh, actually elaborate or extend your knowledge about these courses and uh, grow your interest on these courses. Okay. Uh, now, you can see here, there is a Cisco borderless network. So with the increasing of demand of uh, conversion network that we all already said that uh, many company actually need uh, all the services together, like uh, uh, IP phone uh, services, voice service, uh, voice or video data trans, uh, transmission, then uh, traditional data transmission, all actually need in a one uh, network. So with the increasing demand of this conversion network, the network must be developed with an um, architectural approach that actually invites uh, intelligence you can say uh, simplifies the operation and it also is scalable to meet further or future demands one of the more recent development is uh, network designed that is Cisco borderless network so uh, this network architecture uh, actually combined uh, innovation uh, or, and design that's main part of the developing design uh, it has it allows uh, organizations to support a borderless network uh, that can connect anyone, anywhere, anytime, or any device uh, with uh, more reliability, security, uh, and uh, you can say flexibility. Okay, this architecture is designed to address IT uh, business challenges such as supporting the uh, converse network and um changing uh, work patterns okay so you can see here a figure where this is a large campus medium campus and a small campus that we have already discussed in our network design section that what actually the requirement uh, the uh, security scalability uh, then adaptability um, uh, 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 security then then uh, bandwidth etc right Okay, so Cisco Borderless Network provides the framework to unify uh, wired and wireless access, uh, including the policy access control, performance management across many different devices types. Using this architecture, actually borderless network is built on a, uh, you can see here, the hierarchical uh, infrastructure of hardware that is scalable and uh, reliable, right? And that is, uh, you already know about Core layer, distribution layer, access layer, etc. So by uh, so uh, by combining this hardware in infrastructure uh, with policy-based software solution, the borderless network provides two primary set of services. One is network services, and other is user and endpoint services that are all managed by the integrated management solution. It enables different network elements uh, to work together and allow user to access resources from 
as I said before, that is any form, anywhere, any place, any time, uh, while providing, optimizing stability and security. Okay. So uh, here we can see some role of switch network. You see here the quality of service, uh, additional security, support of wireless network and connectivity, and support for new technologies. And you can see here the different layers of the network. But these are multi-layer switch. That's means layer three switch, and these are layer two switch. Hope you can see my cursor uh, that I'm moving. And these are the access level uh, where uh, there is some uh, connected devices or end user devices. Here you can see this is S1, a switch, this is an IP phone, and this is a PC. Uh, it will be more interesting if you know that this IP phone is also can be used as switch because it has the configuration of H01.Q1. Okay, that's why uh, this IP phone sometimes actually work as a switch. Now, here is some switches. Hope you will see when uh, you attend the workshop. That means uh, some, uh, you can see here some uh, fixed configura uh, configuration of the switches, uh, modular configuration. Uh, scale, Stackable configuration. Okay, so actually, what uh, fixed configuration switch? Uh, it actually do not support feature or uh, um, operation behind this uh, original come with the switch. Actually, um, it's a fixed port. Okay, for example, uh, you can see this is a port. Uh, this is a switch which uh, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, like uh, 24 or uh, 34 uh, 64 uh, or 28 okay so if um, a 24 port gigabyte fixed switch uh, you have then you can't support any additional port there are typically different configuration choose that vary uh, in how many and what type of ports are including in this fixed, conf uh, fixed configuration switch then there is also you can see a modular configuration right Modular, modular configuration switch actually offer more flexibility in their configuration and modular configuration uh, switch typically um, there is different sites uh, and uh, allow um, installing of different number of modular LAN card. So what is actually LAN card? LAN card actually uh, contains some port and this uh, card fit into the switch uh, cases in um, in the uh, in such a way that uh, actually uh, expansion of the card fit in the uh, fit into the into a PC and it large the cases uh, the more modulars uh, in ca it can support actually more um, uh, port actually uh, we can use like uh, if you have it. Uh, single uh, 24 port uh, LAN card uh, and it could be an additional uh, 24 LAN card and install to bring the total number of uh, like 24 24 is um, 48 48 port okay then what is stackable uh, configured switch uh, actually it is interconnected you can see here the image this is this switch is connected to this switch uh, and it also connected to this switch but this switch is also connected to the next switch if we see one two three four the, the four switches then uh, how actually it is interconnected actually uh, inter interconnected using a special cable that uh, provide the high bandwidth so, throughput um, between the switches and you can see in this figure okay <coughs> so uh you can see here there is a line that uh, a layer two switch forward frames maintaining a MAC address table, uh, then the forward frame based on a defined frame switching method. In next slide, we will discuss discuss about this MAC address table and forward frame forward.
So here you can see a MAC address. That means media access control address. So it also can be known as the hardware address or uh, physical address. Hmm. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, every piece of hardware on your local network has a MAC address in addition to the IP address. Uh, Except uh, for uh, switches which have switch MAC address, all devices that connected to the internet have this unique identifying number uh, from desktop computer, laptop, uh, cell phone, uh, tablets, or any other devices to the wireless security camera. Uh, and even you connected, uh, uh, there is some <laughs> refrigerator, I don't know, you know, uh, AC have the MAC addresses. So, uh, why does uh, your uh, network device need two addresses? Uh, if you have an uh, IP address or if you have MAC address, then uh, no, actually not. Here is the question. So why does your uh, network device need two addresses to connect the uh, connect to a network? Actually, uh, isn't a IP address sufficient? Or um, what exactly it, uh, is that uh, MAC address for? So you can think of MAC address as a unique, um, what you can say, um, um, as, as a person you have a fingerprint. So MAC address is as uh, your unique digital fingerprint. Okay, so MAC address is given by the manufacturer and it is embedded in the chip that allow your device to connect to your internet. For a network switch, it is likely to have many MAC addresses since one MAC, MAC address is assigned to every interface of the switch. So MAC address is also, here you can see, uh, <coughs> uh, as a hardware address or physical address and it's a binary number you can see here binary number to uniquely identify computer network adapters uh, packets uh, that are sent on the ethernet are always coming from a mac address and sent to another mac address that means source address and destination address right if a network adapter is uh, receiving any packet uh, it is actually uh, compared the packets destination mac address to the adapter and uh, its own MAC address. That means the packet is for me or not. Uh, if the address match, the package is processed. Um, otherwise, it is actually denied. Or you can say uh, it will um, do not provide any acknowledgement. Okay. If the address match, the packet is processed. Um, so the traditional MAC address, you can see here, 12 digit hexadecimal number right the uh, there is uh, two part left and right uh, you can see here so leftmost the leftmost hexadecimal digit of the address corresponding to actually manufacturers unique identifier right uh, organizational unique identifier and rightmost digit actually it is a, a serial number of the network uh, uh, or NIC. NIC means uh, network interface card. You maybe uh, know all about this. So, MAC versus IP address relationship. You can see here a figure. That is your example. So, we'll go through it. Initially, it might be seen that IP address and MAC address are redundant because uh, both are unique identifiers so uh, for any network devices but they actually serve different purpose uh, that means both are unique but service uh, ser their service is different or uh, that means their purpose of service is different and are uh, visible in different um, different way right so mac operates at the osi model if i differentiate with ip address then ip address actually operates in layer three series we have already know about this MAC address are typically used only to direct packet from one device to next device. So you can see here a example where computer A, B, C, and D is connected. Uh, computer A is connected to computer B with MAC address. It is directly connected. Again, computer B is, uh, uh, sorry, router B is connected to uh, router C MAC address. It is directly. 
but when from ip address a uh, it connected uh, want to connect with d it can use the ip addresses right so uh, <coughs> mac addresses are typically used only uh, direct packets uh, you can see and that means your computer network mac, mac address only travels to the next device of the network if you have a router your machine address will not go further or uh, for uh, further device uh, then uh, what will happen actually for ip address uh, while well, when your computer wants to send a packet to the uh, same ip address uh, hope you already know about class c class b class a ip addresses like 192.168.0.1 or uh, 172.10. Uh, something or 10.0 sorry 10.0.0.1 then any of this you can use this and uh, then the first check is it the destination address um, and is in the same ip network as the uh, as your computer itself then if the ip address is in the same network then the destination ip can be received directly otherwise the packet need to be sent to the uh, configured router that means if it doesn't uh, match the network it will not discard or drop your packets but uh, you need a configured router so furthermore i think you will also learn about it so do you see what actually going on in this figure here uh, you can see mac address table uh, categories of mac address entries and generation of uh, a mac address right so each device maintain a mac address table mac address table records the mac addresses um interface number or if it has any vlan configuration or by default one or vlan id of the connected device when actually forwarding a data frame the device search a mac search actually the mac table for the um, outbound uh, outbound uh, interface according to the destination mac address of, uh, in the frame uh, this helps the device reduce the broadcast actually if uh, uh, any source exactly know what it need to send the data then port is also um, switch port is also defined this or identify this the port destination port address and exactly send the uh, packet to this port okay so uh, here is a uh, categories of uh, network address entry we can see here you can classify the uh, mac address entry into dynamic entry uh, static entry or backhole entry so dynamic entry is created by uh, learning the source mac address uh, and static entry is set by the user or you can say black uh, about the uh, uh, black hole entry is used to uh, discard the frame with the um, specific source MAC address or destination MAC address. Usual uh, user manually save the black hole entries. You already uh, uh, um, familiar with this uh, black hole. There is an interesting note that you have. You must know that is uh, aging time. What is actually aging time? Uh, aging time, uh, basically, the time duration, uh, how um, how long the address is uh, dis uh, stay or disappear. Okay, so static and backhole entries have no aging time. So, but the dynamic entry has aging time means that uh, it uh, will be lost after some uh, if uh, your system is restarted, resetted. Okay, uh, or restart. Uh, the static entry and the backhole entry were do not lost anything because it do not have any aging time. Okay, now uh, generation of MAC address entry. There is a uh, um, two generation process you can say automatically generated MAC address entries and uh, another is manually configured MAC address entries. What is automatically? 
MAC address entries are uh, actually um, learned by automatically. Okay, uh, let me give you an example, then it will be clear to you. Uh, hope there is a switch called A or uh, one, okay, A. Switch A and switch B uh, that are connected to uh, each other, okay. When switch B wants to send a frame to switch A, switch A contain the source MAC address. Uh, mm, that's mean the MAC address of the switch B. Uh, we have already learned with that uh, how uh, ARP actually used to collect the uh, MAC addresses. So, so um, switch A obtained the uh, source MAC addresses uh, from the frame and added the source MAC addresses and the interface number and the MAC address uh, to the MAC address table actually. Uh, when so, uh, switch A receive a frame uh, sent to switch B again. Uh, what actually I said? When switch B send a packet to A, A will receive it and also give a frame to uh, switch B. Okay, then switch A can uh, search the MAC address uh, to the table to find the correct address or the interface. The device actually update the MAC table at intervals uh, to adapt the changes of the network. The int uh, entries uh, in the MAC table will not be valid all the time, okay? Each entry has its own lifetime. As I said before, uh, so what actually uh, manually configuration? Uh, actually, when creating a uh, MAC address manually, its uh, entry is uh, by itself and the device cannot identify whether the packet are from uh, any legal user or from the hacker. It is actually threaded. So automatically uh, is good, but sometimes it is also risky. So for security, the network administrator can add static entries uh, to the MAC table manually to bind the user devices and the port of these devices. So uh, here you can see a uh, figure, how to actually switch LARM MAC addresses. See, there is a switch and there is a three computer or three devices, computer A, computer B and computer C. So let's see some scenario that uh, how actually switch LARM the MAC address. There is a switch uh, in the middle, okay? Uh, now, the all the switch, uh, all the switch have MAC address we know, or uh, sorry, uh, all the devices have the MAC address and switch have the MAC address table and it will learn actually uh, where all the MAC addresses are in the network. That means uh, this MAC address, this MAC address and all the computer have has a, its uh, own MAC address, but actually for uh, example, it's using triple A, triple B, triple C. Okay, so computer A is going to send for uh, some data mean, um, to computer B, thus it will create an Ethernet frame which has a um, source MAC address A, triple A, and destination MAC address triple B. So it is clear. Uh, the switch has a MAC address table, and uh, actually, what happened? Here is the Ethernet frame, okay? So switch A will generate this uh, Ethernet frame where that you can see here, the destination is triple B. That means destination MAC address is triple B and source, uh, um, source MAC address is triple A. And this is the Ethernet frame. The frame is also contain lots of information, but uh, this is the initial portion uh, we are seeing. So uh, the switch will build a MAC address table and only learn from the source MAC address. At this moment, it just uh, uh, learned that MAC address of uh, A is on interface one. You can see here, sorry, where is my cursor? A. This is one, this is two, and this is three. Uh, we know that interface is not like one, two, three. It's like uh, F uh, zero slash one, zero slash two, zero slash three, or serial uh, zero, zero, 
I uh, hope you all already see in the packet tracer, right? So uh, it will now add this information in this MAC address table, but the switch currently <coughs> has no information where computer B is located. Uh, it actually don't know. Uh, only one option left uh, in the here that uh, all if source uh, switch actually uh, gives this frame to all of this code. Uh, who who are the receiver? It will uh, take the frame, and who is not? It will deny. So since uh, actually computer B C D A uh, the frame uh, and it finds the MAC address uh, of itself as the destination of the Ethernet frame, uh, it know that it's him, right? And computer C also receive the frame but it will not take but it will discard it so computer b is going to respond to computer a see here mac address a uh, switch is uh, containing the mac address of uh, computer a and it is forwarding to all the port that's been computer b and c and uh, after this see here only computer b will respond right computer B will response and that's why switch will collect the MAC address of B. So hope you are uh, all uh, understand, uh, you all understand this situation uh, from this figure. So if MAC address of uh, computer A and B are not updated within this uh, aging time, uh, they will be delayed to make uh, for new entry. Okay, which means the frame between the A and B will be uh, floated to computer C again. And if A wants to transmit information to B, that means uh, you think uh, A and B is communicating again and again and again and again. So uh, computer C will not get any chance. And it is uh, also called a bottleneck problem. That means uh, if any other computer or devices do not get any chance of uh, sending or receiving its data. Now, uh, uh, at this point, we already uh, learned about the MAC address, what actually MAC address, how actually is a MAC address increase, or what is MAC address table now we will go through the uh, frame forwarding okay so a lens switch contain a table uh, that is used to determine how to forward traffic through uh, through the switch using the example uh, you can see in this figure a message enter switch port 1 right but destination port address you can see here see destination port address is ea ea the switch look up the outgoing port ea and forward the traffic output four because see here is a port table you can see destination address port address port one is containing double e two is double a three is ba four is ea so uh switch is uh, containing a message or frame where the packet destination address is EA and it will uh, see its port table and when it will see the port table containing EA destination address is port 4 then it will actually transmit to port 4 so we can see here so this data is transmit to port 4 There is another situation uh, here. The message uh, entry switch port five and has a destination address triple uh, sorry double e. So you can see here the switch look up the outgoing port as before and uh, for triple uh, double e and uh, forward the traffic port one. So how it works like this? Okay, and there is another example here. You can see. Uh, the port is coming from um, three uh, port uh, coming to port three and destination address is a b so can you say or write in the chat box uh, actually where the data will go
Okay. Right. See. <clears throat> so it's clear. Now we'll go through the dynamically uh, populating a switch uh, MAC address TV. What actually happening? A uh, switch use MAC address to direct network communication through the switch to the uh, appropriate port toward the destination and the switch is made up of uh, integrated switch uh, circuit and the um, software can uh, that can control the data path okay for a switch to know which port to use to, uh, to transmit a frame it must first learn so here you can see two step learn and forward okay so for a switch to know which port to use to transmit a frame it must first learn uh, which device exists on each port as the switch learn the relationship of port to device it builds a mac address table as we learned before and it is also called a contain addressable memory or that means c a m okay So here we can see two step. The step one is learn and step two is forward. So here is two condition you can see. Every frame that actually enter the switch is checked for new information to learn. It does uh, uh, actually does this by examining the frame source address and the port number as we see in previous picture where the frame enter in the port. So if the source address source MAC address does not exit, uh, it is added to the table along with the incoming port. Please remember, uh, remind the aging time, okay? Uh, I will discuss it. Discuss it. Uh, if the source MAC address does not exit, it is added to the table along with the incoming port number. That's mean if port number doesn't match then uh, if uh, in previous you can see here like uh, the destination address is ab and it's coming to port 3 but ab is not in the port table so uh, this table will update it that's mean the port 3 will update it with ab that's mean ba will be dis uh, dismissed how and why that is, if the uh, MAC address table uh, exit, the switch update the refresh time, that means aging time for that entry. But by default, most Ethernet switch keep an entry in the table for five minutes. That's why I say, uh, if there is no match, then it will search uh, for the uh, new entry. Okay, uh, that means it, it is new entry and it must replace. Okay. So, uh, if the source address does exist in the table but on a different port, the switch treat this as a new entry and the entry is replaced using the same MAC address but with more current port number. Clear? So, uh, here is uh, the timing uh, sense or uh, aging time. Clear? Now, next is forward examining the destination MAC address. So if the destination MAC address is a unique cast address, the switch will look for a match between destination MAC address of the frame and the entry of the MAC address table. So if the destination address in the table, it forward the uh, frame out of the uh, specific port. That's mean this situation, right? Okay. And if the destination MAC address is not in the table, the switch forward the frame out all port except the incoming port. That means switch actually forward to if you have uh, 8 port, if you have 24 port and it is not uh, configured with VLAN, then it will uh, broadcast uh, the packet to all of the port. So if the destination MAC address is a broadcast or a multicast, the frame is also floated out all ports expect the incoming port. Clear? Okay. You can say, see here, 
uh, switch forwarding method. Okay. Uh, actually, the method of forwarding data frame at layer two was referred as a, a store and forward switching, which is different from uh, path switching. That's when we can say here two forwarding uh, method. One is uh, store and forward, and another is cut through. Uh, if I summarize the uh, process, then you can see here, and uh, in store and forward method, uh, makes a forward decision on a frame after it has received the entire frame and check the frame for error using a mathematical error checking mechanism. Uh, it called CRC or cycle redundancy check. Remember that I said forward uh frame after receiving the entire frame and checking the frame of uh frame for error in that is stored and forward okay on the other hand the cut the through method uh, you can see in the uh, next figure here being the forward uh, process after destination address that means there is a frame and it will check the destination address okay so uh <laughs> uh, just one sir. question yes, uh, why send it out all ports how does this help okay uh, i already said that if there is a match of destination address destination if match then it will exactly send the uh, address to uh, exact port but if it's not uh defined to him or uh the port doesn't know about the destination address or doesn't recognize actually recognize and you have 24 ports but uh the switch actually do not know that uh ea is on port 8 so uh it will actually uh when receive the destination address it will say uh see the destination address is ea but which port it doesn't know. Then it will actually broadcast to all of the port. And as I said before, only receiver will receive this and other the port or other the receiver will deny this. Okay, I think it is clear. Okay, uh, so what actually I said? Uh, the store and forward and next is cut the through. So store and forward actually check all the frame that is MAC address uh, or if there is any error mm. or not. Then uh, after this, it will send the whole packet. But uh, when it is cut the through method, it will not check all the frame. It will not check the full frame. It will just check the destination port. First, it will check preamble or contention window or you can say beacon or one uh, small time that there is a receiver is wake up or not and then it will send uh, uh, the frame when it check the destination address uh, if there is any error or not it will not check so here is the difference between the source uh, so store and forward switching and the cut the through we will also see here the frame here you can say frame header. Frame header is containing preamble, destination address, MAC address, type, etc. and FCS checksum, right? So, all the frame will be checked in store and forward switch. That means error checking, automatic buffering, and then it will forward. So, what is actually error checking? A switch uh, um, using uh, store and forward, forward switching performance and error checking on incoming frame after receiving the entire frame on the in base port. Actually, what I said, the incoming port is in base port. Okay. Or uh, um, the switch actually compared the FCS. Here is FCS. FCS is frame check sequence value in the last field of the diagram. Uh, you can say against the against its own calculated calculated FCS for error checking. The FCS is a error checking process that helps to ensure that the frame is free of physical and data link error. If the frame is error free, then the switch forward the frame. Otherwise, it will drop. Okay, That's then then what is automatic buffering? The increase port actually buffering process that um, used to provide the flexibility to support any 
um, eternity speed. L let's see an example. Um, uh, say an example like uh, one port is uh, one port have the capability of receiving uh, 100 megabyte per second, um, but uh, you are sending the data uh, one gigabyte per second. Suppose then it will be mismatch, okay? So with any mismatch in speed between the ingress and egress port, the switch stores the entire frame in the buffer, computes the FCS check and forward it to the uh, it, uh, output port uh, buffer and uh, then send it, okay? So uh, this uh, drop frames and do not pass the uh, FCS check, therefore it does not forward the uh, invalid frame, but the problem with the cut through switching, it actually faster than the store and forward because it is not checking whole the frame. Okay, it only checking you can see here only this two two frame. Okay, uh, this two portion of the frame, uh, but uh, with the um, Cut the through, it may be forward invalid invalid frame too, because there is no checking of FCS. That is the main difference between the cut the through and uh, store and forward. Okay, you can see here, see here, collision domain and broadcast domain. See, collision domain and broadcast domain, that's mean, uh, hope you're uh, already, I have said, the mismatch, right? So, source and destination, both point must contain same duplex. That means full duplex or half duplex, both are containing the same, du must contain the same duplex. Again, for speed, both source and destination must match the speed, okay? On the other hand, you can see here the broadcast domain. Here, the uh, for switch one, you can say it is uh, broadcasting all the data packet to all the port uh, without incoming port. And if S1 is connected to S2, then hope if uh, this PC uh, send a packet, it will broadcast to this all port and also, uh, this S1 switch is connected to S2 switch, so all the port of S2 will also receive the uh, forwarded packet, okay? Okay, now the new things we have to know, that is NAT operation. Though there is no chance to take any question answer, uh, however, I want to uh, ask that: uh, Do you know actually how many IP4 addresses actually available? You can uh, say in the chat box. Right. Uh, someone replied very limited, yes, uh, like uh, 4.3 billion. But uh, in the whole country, uh, sorry, not country, a uh, whole world, how many people are using devices? And uh, how many actually people? Devices, forget that about the devices because uh, um, uh, as a person, I am using three devices or four devices. So lots of people have lots of uh, so many devices. So uh, only think about uh, the whole world, how many actually people, right? Uh, more than 10 or 16 billion. So uh, to, the, uh, to uh, access the internet, uh, one public IP address is needed, but uh, we can use a private IP address in our private network, not to the other uh, network. Uh, so uh, 4.3 billion, as I said, uh, IP V4 addresses would not be enough. So router in the network has a private address uh, of that address space. And the router is also connected to the uh, 
uh, internet with a public address that typically assigned by a internet service provider. So almost all the network connecting to the internet use the service of the network address transmission. This is NAT, NAT. Typically, between uh, different organizations, institutions, uh, assigns um, inside host IP addresses. When uh, existing the, um, uh, when uh, you are searching for, for something and it is uh, go out of the internet, uh, internal network, then actually what happened? The private address are translated to public IP addresses. And uh, after that, uh, return the traffic to the public IP address and uh, then read traffic. <laughs> It to the internal IP address. So, uh, how actually this work and what actually happened? That will be our next discussion. So, um, there is not uh, enough IP before addresses as uh, we are concerned, and that is the uh, main issue that we need to use this net. This private address are used to within the organization or site to allow devices to communicate locally right uh, hope uh, you are in uh, a campus and you are using a private ip so this private ip is for only uh, your internet or inter uh, network or inter uh, local network local uh, network okay uh, then if you want to use the outside thing then what actually happen uh, nat provides the translation <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, translation of private addresses to the public addresses. Okay, this allow a devices with a private IP port address to access resources outside uh, of their private network, such as find anything like uh, any information you want from Google or from any anywhere uh, that is outside world. Okay, so uh, NAT enables uh, what? Here you can see a figure, right? See, this is internal network and this is uh, outside network or internet, you can see. So this is private, this is a router and this is public. When these private network actually come to this point, router, net router actually uh, serves its table and uh, translate or transmit this private address to the public address. Then this internet actually see the pu public address, not the private address. And see uh, when it actually uh, feedback or return the traffic, it will give it to the public address. Then when come to this router, this router will again translate the uh, address and send to the uh, private IP address, okay? Here you can see an example too, okay? Uh, uh, hope you all know about uh, subnet. Right. Actually, net enabled routers can be configured with one or more valid public IP for IPv4 addresses. These public addresses were known as a net pool. When a, uh, an internal device sends traffic out of the network, the net enables the router that translates the internal IP address of the device to the public address for NAT. And this NAT router typically operates at the border of sub network. That's why I asked you uh, that, uh, or um, I said you that I hope you know about the uh, subnet. Actually, uh, sub network is a network that actually has a single connection to its neighbor network. That means one way in or uh, one way out of the network. So here you can see router 2, right? There is the router 2. Router 2 is a border router for uh, the perspective of this ISP, that's mean internet service provider. 
this R2 is a sub network. When a device inside the sub network want to communicate with a device outside network, this is inside network and this is outside network. The packet is forwarded to the border router. So this is a border line uh, or you can say it's a border gate. Uh, you are uh, uh, standing here and uh, your friend is standing here. So you are using this gate to uh, get or get man to passing something. Okay. So when a uh, uh, border router perform the NAT process, translate the internal IP address to the public IP address uh, uh, and uh, for the outside and uh, that will be routable address. Okay. Before before going to the uh, net uh, work or net procedure, we will uh, learn about something that is inside address, outside address, local address, and global address. I, I think it is uh, clear by that name or by that term, right? So uh, inside network and outside network is clear to us. Then what is inside and outside address, local and global address? Actually, inside address is the address that NAT is translating and the uh, outside is the address of destination address. And local and global is the, that is portion for inside and portion for outside. Uh, but there is combinedly four addresses, that is inside local address, inside global address. That means for this network, it has a inside IP address, private that is inside local and when it is translated that is inside global address for the outsider uh, network but for the uh, public ip address it is uh, same always same that's mean outside local and outside global address is always same here you can see in this figure uh, that's mean <clears throat> If PC1 has a inside local address, you can see here 192.168.10.10, right? Uh, from the perspective of PC1, the uh, web server has an outside address, that is, web server of IP address, that is uh, 209.165.201.1. Uh, when packets are sent from PC1 to the global address web server, the inside local address PC1 is translated to it inside global address that means 209.165.200.226 okay so uh, the address of the outside servers is not typically translated because the address is usually the public as address as i said before so maybe you are clear now if it is uh, back or return then this service will uh, send not to this inside local it will send the uh, traffic to the inside global address and it will come to the router and from this router it will translate it to its own uh, IP address that means private network address uh, 192.168.10.10 here you can see the procedure see here the inside local address is a uh, then it is inside global address right so when it is going uh, first of all r1 is seeing the sa it is coming to r2 r2 is seeing its table that's mean net pool or net table then translating the ip address source ip address translating the source ip addresses that is uh, 209.165.200.226 and then it will send to the server. When server will reply this, it will uh, come to 209.165.200.226. When, when come to router 2, then router 2 will uh, translate, re -trans translate the uh, address to the private IP address. Now, you can see uh, the net actually have three type of net, that is a static net, dynamic net, and port net. What actually static net do? All the private IP address will contain individual public address, which is not actually possible. Because you think if you have 
hundred or thousand IP address, private IP address. So you need hundred or thousand public IP address, which is actually uh, not capable for uh, this situation, right? That's why you can say that for static net, the, that that is one to one communication. It's only uh, work for the for companies like uh, if uh, any uh, company authorized people want to access their own company server, then how they can actually access? They can use the public IP address for individual private IP address. Okay, now what is dynamic? For dynamic, it is not fixed. Uh, where static containing the fixed IP address for uh, public IP address for private IP address. But in the dynamic net, the uh, public IP address is not fixed for any private IP address. Actually, it contains uh, like um, 10 or 20 public IP address. It uh, serves as a first come first serve. When one private IP address come to the router, uh, it will take the first, public, uh, uh, first available public address and it will give to the router and it will uh, operate uh, as its own way. But there is a problem too. See, you have a uh, public address, uh, 10 public addresses or 20 public address, but you have a 100 or 1000 private address. So at a time, or at this point, only 10 or 20 address, uh, IP address uh, can be work. Otherwise, other remaining IP address can't work through it. Hope you can understand. For this solution, we use port address. Actually, for uh, port address, <coughs> it also called net overlap. Uh, overloading. Uh, this means uh, uh, this uh, actually this mainly uh, map multiple private uh, address to a single public address port. That means we are using only one single public IP address. Like uh, you have uh, 10, 10 private IP address. Okay. And you have one public ad IP address. But they are using the port number. Okay. Using the port number, they can use uh, one IP address, one public IP address for uh, many private IP addresses. How? So uh, actually most of um, the home router, you can say, uh, do this type of services and uh, the ISP assign one addresses to the router and several member of uh, household can simultaneously access the internet. This is the most common and most usable net, that is PET, port address translation. With PET, multiple address can be mapped uh, to one to a uh, few addresses because each private address is also tracked by a port number. When, uh, actually, how actually port address generate? When a device uh, initiate a TCP IP session, it generates TCP or UDP source port value or a specially assigned query ID for ICMP to uniquely identify the session. When the NAT route receives a packet from the client, it actually uses its source port number to uniquely identify the specific translation. You can see here, uh, uh, um, you can see here there is a inside local IP address with 192.168.10.10, but its port address is 1555. Clear? Now, here is another network, 192.168.10.11, and its port address is 1331. But both are using the same IP address with their own port number. So that is more useful for translating your IP address. So we can summarize this like uh, uh, static net is not uh, unuseful. It's, it is useful, but for some uh, main, uh, for small purpose. And dynamic uh, uh, net address is also useful, but 
it lim it has some limitation like if we only have 10 but or 20 port address uh, at a time only 10 or 20 port address it will work or otherwise all the ip address will be stopped okay but pack is uh, more useful because uh, one public ip address can access more than one two three four more more ip addresses with their own port number okay so uh, when actually uh, uh, this uh, ip address uh, want to search anything it will it will translate it to this port and when uh, uh, coming from the server it will check the port number and then trans translate it to the IP, uh, private ip address and send to the uh, final distribution now come to the next topics that is spanning tree actually why expanding tree is needed a spanning tree actually it is a protocol uh, that actually runs on our switches uh, to help or to solve the loop uh, uh, actually um, when we are using two switch we can use multiple link between these two it can be causes of loop again uh, you can use three switch and this three switch can be made triangle and it also create a loop and to break this loop we use spanning tree and how actually do uh, we'll see the figure uh, actually before understanding why need spanning tree uh, let's go through uh, the um, figure and see uh, what is a loop and how do we get uh, loop uh, let's show the example you can see switch one and switch two is connecting through uh, interface uh, zero slash zero and zero slash zero uh, this switch are connected to each other with a single cable so there is a single point of uh, that's mean it can be failed anytime right to get rid of this single point of failure we will add another cable so what will happen if we add another cable with this extra cable we now have redundancy unfortunately for us redundancy also a bridge loop why do we actually have a loop in this scenario uh, or in this picture how we can see you can see here a packet right uh, a uh, orange color orange color packet right so uh, h1 sent a arp request because it's looking for mac address of h2 because it wants to send packets then a arp request is broadcast with this frame uh, this switch one will forward forward this packet uh, broadcast this all of this office interface that's mean uh, like uh, this is a port there is another port 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 this is a port this is a port okay if it sends a packet it will uh, forward to this port this port all over the port yes uh, okay uh, switch two will receive the uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, packet or frame okay form f uh, zero zero switch 2 will also receive it uh, to f00 but when it will back it what actually happen switch 2 will do this broadcast frame it will uh, forward the frame out of every interface expect the interface where it received from the uh, frame this means that uh, the frame that was received on the f00 it will forward on f1 not f00 the frame was received on uh, f1 then it will uh, uh, forward to f00 not f1 uh, so see uh, in the example see if uh, switch one uh, transmit from f00 to switch to f00 now switch two will forward this to this port this port uh, and so other uh, other ports except this f00 now this f1 will also forward this how see 
it will forward this in F1 port. Now, this F1 will also again forward this. How? All this port. Here and here. So, it is loop. Again, this will uh, transmit to this port. This port will be forward to all the port. This port again transmit to this port and this will uh, all over the port. So, this is the looping. To break this looping, actually, we need this spanning tree. So, uh, for a spanning tree, we need to uh, know the term like bridge, root bridge, non root bridge, uh, root port, destination port, port ID, and path pass. And the five steps is control frame forwarding like disable, docking, listening, learning, and forwarding. Okay, so we'll discuss with the figure. But what actually the disable state? The disable state is does not actually practiced in the spanning tree loop because the port is uh, administratively uh, disabled and its timing is also unlimited. So disable interface perform like uh, discard the frame receive on the port and does not learn the address or does not receive the uh, big BPDU. BPDU that means uh, Breeze Protocol Data Unit. Okay. Okay. So, what is then blocking? The blocking state uh, is a non -des uh, designated port. Uh, then, a listening state uh, is a fast state. Uh, what actually they do, we will go through a uh, example it will be better for us see how actually spanning tree solve the loop there is an example and i think uh, we will finish through this spanning tree example okay uh, this is our last topics in this lecture so spanning tree to, uh, will help us to create a loop free topology by blocking a certain interface. Uh, so uh, we have three switches here. Uh, as I said before, we can uh, uh, see loop between two switches and also for three switches. And we can see we have uh, added redundant by containing the switches in a triangle. This also means we have a loop here, right? So they have a MAC address, but uh, we'll uh, specify like triple A, triple B, triple C. Okay. Now, uh, since the spanning tree is enabled, all our sources will uh, send a special frame to each other uh, called uh, bridge protocol that I need. And this bridge protocol that I need uh, actually uh, two pieces of information content that is uh, MAC address and priority. The MAC address and priority together make the bridge ID. That is the bridge ID. Okay, so you can see here. Spanning tree mainly uh, required the bridge uh, ID for its calculation. Let me uh, let me explain you how. You can see here another uh, uh, scenario. That is, uh, first uh, uh, first of all, actually, uh, spanning tree will elect a root bridge. See here, there is a loop. Now we are uh, saying how to solve this uh, loop by uh, through the spanning tree. So first of all, spanning tree will elect a root bridge. Okay, how? The root bridge will be uh, the most uh, important. Uh, how uh, it will take uh, the things that uh, low uh, MAC address, uh, highest priority, etc. So the switch with uh, with the lowest uh, breeze ID is the best one. By default, the priority is um, uh, there is a number that like that is three two seven six eight. Uh, we can change it also. Okay, so uh, will become the uh, root bridge. In this example, a, a switch one we can see here is the uh, root bridge because the priority and MAC address uh, um, uh, actually uh, decide the bridge ID. All the switches, it will be the MAC address uh, that is the tribical. Okay, 
So let's think is switch one has the lowest MAC address. So the best breeze ID can be found in this switch one. And this is the root breeze. The port uh, on our root breeze are always designated. We are uh, using here D. See, here is D. So designated, which means they are in the forwarding state. Uh, so take a look in this picture. And next we use R. You can see here R. Why this R? We select first root breeze, then the designated port, and next we use R. Why R? Actually, we using the R to find the shortest, shortest path to reach the root breeze. Okay? So, uh, you can uh, calculate here the path cost. Why? Uh, actually, uh, there is F00 interface is the shortest path to get the root base in this example. Uh, shortest path, path uh, in spanning tree means it will actually look at the speed of the Ethernet. Each uh, interface uh, has a certain cost and path with the lowest cost uh, will be used here and overview of the interface and their cost you can see three different costs for 10 mb uh, cost is 100 100 uh, uh, cost is 19 it, both all are the by default so there is excellent things we have designed port on our root base and root port on our non root base but we still have a good like um, that's mean uh, it can go through this way, it can go through this way, again come here, this way, there is good. So we have to down one thing, one thing, how? So uh, we have to shut down one board, that means switch two and switch two break the loop. So which port are we going to shut down? The one of the switch two or one of the switch three, we will look again the paste bridge ID. So, for uh, selecting the root breeze or uh, shutdowning the another uh, connection or location, we must think about the breeze ID. That means breeze ID is priority plus bank address. So, lower is better. So both switches have the same priority, but think MAC address of the switch to is lower. Then, I mean, <clears throat> it, uh, it, can, it is clear that uh, Swiss 2 will win the um, win the battle. You can see. Okay, so S3 uh, Swiss 3 is our uh, loser one and it will be blocked. So you can see here it is shut down, right? So uh, from this uh, spanning tree. We can see here when there is creating a loop, we we, we can break it through uh, using a <coughs> root port, and from the root port we can uh, use uh, a destination port. Find uh, can uh, also can uh, find the uh, destination port and root port, and can also select the non-root port. And from this we can also. Uh, decide the breeze ID by calculating the priority and MAC address uh, and which uh, is low, that will be the winner. So in this case, we can see here uh, the correction between the uh, distinction port and the port uh, root port. But uh, if there is low, then we can also use this breeze ID to shut down one link. So we shut down this link uh, to uh, solve the loop. So I uh, hope you can understand that scanning tree also. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, maybe I have taken too many time. Uh, sorry for that. Thank you. Okay, Orpita, thank you for your nice presentation. And a long time we have uh, learned about the uh, switching and many other topics. I think the participants, you have uh, already got the assessment link. 
so you can start your asset assessment assessment and it will uh, end uh, 540 